So you yeah, are welcome to this lecture. Um, in this lecture, we want to uh, study something about the Adam diagram. Okay. So um, when we are studying complex numbers, the Adam diagram is often used to be able to view things uh, pictorially, right? To view what a complex number is in terms of uh, using uh, diagrams. Okay. So what is the Adam diagram? Giving a complex number, let's say z is equal to x plus y i. Okay, where of course x and y are real numbers. Now we can represent this complex number on a two-dimensional plane, right? On the um, if we let you know if we let the the x axis that we know of be the real part of the complex number, okay? And then the y axis be the imaginary part of the complex number. So that a complex number z, I can let it be the ordered pair x and y, where x and y are of course the real numbers. And so I have a diagram that looks like this. On the real axis, okay, I have my x, x units from the origin. On the y axis, on the imaginary axis, I have the y here. So that the point here, x. Y could be used to represent the complex number Z on a plane. Okay? So this diagram is called the Adam diagram. Now, the horizontal axis is called the real axis because uh, every point along this, along this uh, horizontal axis uh, is a real number X. Okay? In other words, Y is zero along this. And so you are left with just X. Now, the vertical axis is the imaginary axis. Okay, it's imaginary because along this axis, what, um, what is it, x is zero, and so all you have is the y component. So this is called the imaginary axis. So this is a complex plane. The diagram is called the Adam diagram. So we have to call this a complex plane. Or sometimes it's re referred to as a Z, the Z plane. And so given any complex number, you can represent it on a diagram where the horizontal axis is the real part of the, uh, of the complex number and the vertical axis is the imaginary part of the complex number. So for instance, uh, given z uh, to be equal to 2, let's say plus 3i, and I want to represent this on uh, the pattern diagram, all I do is write this. This is my real axis. This is my imaginary axis. The point Z will be two units along the horizontal axis, is one, one, and two, and then three units along the imaginary axis. So one, one, two, three. So and here the point two, three. So this represents the complex number Z along the plane. Adam diagram, the complex plane or the Z plane. Okay? Good. Now, this also means that you can actually represent the complex number um, as a two dimensional vector, right? As a vector. Because then, now, so let's say complex, complex, the complex number, complex number as a vector. Okay, so in this case, we're just representing a point, right? Uh, you can turn that into a vector, all right? Uh, a position vector, if now you let the origin be, you know, the starting point of your vector, and the end point be the point uh, Z, the point on the other diagram. So given Z, because X plus Y, I, I could actually use this, okay? So we can, we can come back and use this. So now, given z, which is x plus y, i, x and y are real, if I connect a point from the origin to this, this I can view it as the vector for the complex number x plus y, i. So now, instead of just viewing it as a point, we are seeing it as a vector. Okay? So you can also view complex numbers as a vector uh, with components as uh, 
uh, X component and Y component in phase one. All right? Good. Now, if um, you view it as a vector, then we know what a vector is. A vector should have uh, a modulus, or um, if you like, a distance, it should have a direction as well. Okay? And so, uh, once you view it as a vector, then you then go on to talk about what is the, uh, the modulus of, of a complex number. So that is what we are going to look at. So first, we have said that you can represent any complex number on a plane. That plane is called the Hellman diagram, complex plane or the z-plane, okay? Where you just have a point. Any complex number can just represent it by a point like this example. Now, you can also view a complex number as a vector. All right, with x and y components uh, by connecting from their origin right to the point x y. Two things. So now, what is the modulus of a complex number? What is the modulus definition? By definition, given the complex number z, s plus yi, the modulus, right, which will be the distance from the origin to the point x, y, right, this length here, that will be the modulus, is represented by s, and is equal to, is the point at the square root of, the square of the real part of the complex number plus the square of the imaginary part. So basically that is it. This is the definition for the modulus of any complex number. Okay? So for example, find, find the modulus of the complex complex numbers. Okay, let's say um, Z is equal to 3 uh, minus 4i. Uh, B, find the modulus of whatever 2 plus 3i. Okay? Given any complex number, you can find uh, the modulus of it. And the modulus just talks about the distance from the, um, from the, um, from the origin to, to the point. To this one. So this is this is the modulus of the complex number. Okay. So let's um, let's do these simple examples. Solution. Uh, A. We have z is equal to three minus four i. Then the modulus of z is equal to the square root of the square of this, that is 3 squared, right, plus the square of the um, imaginary part. So that will be the square root of 9, plus square of this is 16, and the square root of that's 25, right, and that is just equal to 5 minutes. So that's straightforward. B here Z is equal to what? 2 plus 3i. So the modulus of Z will just be the square root of 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, that's the square root of 9 plus this is what, 13. And that gives you the modulus of the complex number. Okay, now for each of these, you can, you can, you can sketch it on the complex plane too to see where, to, to, to represent where the modulus is, right? So for instance, uh, with this guy, with this, okay, uh, this is 3 and negative, so if I have on my complex plane, this is the real of z, imaginary z at 3 units, the x to 3, and then uh, 4, the negative direction. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, there, right? 
this is 3, negative 4 here, so I have, so I have that, right? As a vector, this is the complex number that's okay. And so this is saying that the distance from the origin to this point is five five units. Alright? We can do the same thing for this, right? Where this one will be the first quadrant, right? This is two, three, so two units. One, two, three, three units. So that's somewhere here. Okay. Okay. So this this modulus is equal to what was it? The square root of protected. Actually, yeah. Alright, protect. So that means that this comes from the origin too. Where your point is to be as this reflect. Okay, so basically we have learned about the Adam diagram. Um, where you can represent any complex number on a plane, that plane with the Adam diagram or the complex plane. The x axis is the real part of z, the vertical one is the imaginary part. Um, you can also view any complex number as a vector, right? A position vector from the origin to the point x, y, where x is the real, y is the imaginary part. Uh, once you begin seeing it as a vector, then of course you talk about the modulus, right? And then the argument of the vector. We'll talk about the argument later on. But now we know how to find the um, the modulus of any complex number, right? So that is what you should take away from this lesson. Um, so that giving z is x plus y i modulus of this is square root of this, which also implies that z squared is x squared plus y squared. Or if z was a and b, a plus b i, same thing, so we is where the b squared. Okay? And then in the next um, the next lecture we are going to we are going to prove some properties, some propositions concerning the modulus of the complex number. And so um, I'll see you in the next lecture. See you.